In fact, a manifesto was commissioned then by the Turkish National Assembly justifying the end of the caliphate on the one hand, and on the other hand, inviting Muslim peoples to define freely the forms of government that suited their particular situations. Which is very important because what it meant then is not only that one had to take into account the disappearance of the caliphate and reinvent from scratch uh, 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 political philosophy for Muslim communities, but to invite those communities to now think, rethink afresh what it meant for them to design their own institution was a way of recognizing nation states. Nation states introduced to the rest of the world by European colonialism was somehow uh, 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 accepted by that manifesto published by the Turkish National Assembly inviting the different uh, uh, nations to invent their own uh, institutions now that the caliphate was abolished. There were responses from many uh, learned people, ulama as they are called in the Muslim world, claiming that there existed this Islamic model of political organization based on some implicit constitution, both going back to the prophet of Islam himself, and therefore demanded, they demanded that the Muslims eternally strive to be in conformity with it. So you would have this one position refusing the very idea that the caliphate had disappeared. And somehow this is the ancestry, the intellectual ancestry of political Islam today. If one single uh, uh, idea that the different uh, fundamentalists or so-called fundamentalists or extremists, Islamists share, is the idea that one way or another that caliphate that was abolished in 1923-24 should be reconstituted because it was an ideal that it is up to no human being to uh, 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 abolish. To rethink the political question, or rather, Abdelaziz says, to think it for the very first time, as the issue had been until then essentially hijacked and obfuscated by the question of the caliphate, asking who should govern, is what was done on the other side of the intellectual and political spectrum. Therefore, political science posing the questions of the nature and types of government had remained underdeveloped in the Muslim world. In his book, published in 1925, the year after the caliphate was abolished, Abdelaziz makes the observation that philosophical thought in the Islamic world, even at the times when it was flourishing, that is, uh, the first uh, uh, hundred years after Greek philosophy had been translated into Syriac first, Arabic uh, uh, second. So philosophical thought had neglected to seriously address those topics. The reason was political, according to the author. Thrones do not like to see posed the question of the foundations of power because it could lead to the unveiled fact that it ultimately rests on force and draws no real legitimacy from what they pretend to be a form of continuation of the prophet's earth. It is in fact the very notion of continuation that needs to be questioned because after all, as Abdelazid in a deliberately provocative way asked, was the prophet a king? Ali Abdelazid opposed those who responded to the new situation, claiming that there was an Islamic model of government founded upon some implicit constitution, both going back to the prophet of Islam himself. He demonstrated that there has never been such a thing as an ideal government establishing a norm to be followed by Muslim populations in their efforts to create political institutions. The historical facts are that the Prophet of Islam had no purpose of constituting a political state. Of course he did lead the radically new type of community that his message had created. 
but he was not preoccupied with instituting the principles of a system of government with all the basic rules for its function. So if we do not know anything about the procedures by which the system was supposed to perpetuate itself, it is not because of a lack of historical information, it is because things had been left open for human reason and judgment. That is the main point made by Ayyad Darazi. What he reads when revisiting the early history of Islam is not the will to institute a model of indissoluble unity between state and religion, but the intention to start a society where nothing prevents the people from imagining and building the systems of government adopted, adapted to the conditions that the movement of life continuously creates. It is certainly the pressure of modernity which has triggered such a retrospective reading of the events of early Islam. And after all, human beings always do that. History is always written in the present. The reason why Ali Abdel Razik has that reading is that he is reflecting back on the early history of Islam from the standpoint of the present, the then present state of the Islamic societies under colonial rule, looking forward to liberating themselves from that colonial rule, but that meant also inventing the institutions in which they were going to uh, 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 live. So that does not mean that there is anything in unauthentic in the approach of Ali Abdelazi that demonstrates that nothing in the fundamentals of the religion is opposed to the modern demand of, for a separation between the state and the mosque and to the development of an autonomous science of the political. We jump over uh, um, um, decades. Ali, uh, Ali Alawi, who served as minister in post-war Iraqi government, writes this, I quote, the institution of the caliphate symbolizes the formal world power of Islam. The yearning for its reinstatement has been the constant theme for radical Islamists. The idea of the caliphate continues to exert a powerful pull on Muslims and its restitution has been skillfully employed by Islamists of all hues as a shorthand for the emergence of a Muslim super state able to describe uh, the word state. Alawi also writes that, I quote, the reality is such that the caliphate, at least in its historical form, is unlikely to be resuscitated. The current division of the Muslim world into nation states, republics, and monarchies, democracies, and autocracies is far too advanced to assume that they could ever be regrouped within a single empire or super state inspired by religion. This is, end of quote, this is to say that ultimately the response to the narrative of secularization the one told by Charles Taylor, for example, as I mentioned earlier, will consist of practical responses, in the plural, necessarily, at the level of the nation states, namely, actually, the members of the Organization of the Islamic Conference, OIC. The OIC is what is left of the former idea of an ummah, not the kind of the challenge is to create democracies based on secularism that will take different forms, of course, we do not have one single form of secularism or one single form of modernity, by the way, provided that core principles are still present. Those core principles would be, one, moral equality of persons, and second, freedom of conscience and religion. Now, these two uh, uh, core principles I am taking from the work of, again, Charles Taylor and uh, uh, um, Jocelyn McClure, uh, not in, from a secular age, but the work that they did for the government of Quebec. The government of Quebec, uh, uh, addressing precisely the same issue I'm here presenting, the notion of compatibility between the Muslim immigrants and uh, uh, modern state uh, of America, uh, commissioned a report by uh, Taylor and Justin McClure, 
and they come up with this notion, I think, which is very important, that uh, uh, um, secularism should be just based on the four uh, following principles, I will call it, two purposes first and two uh, institutional principles, the two purposes being the moral equality of person, they say, second, the freedom of conscience and religion, and then two essential institutional structures translating, so to say, those two purposes, separation of church and state, second, state neutrality in respect of religious and deep-seated secular convictions. On that ground, they claim what could build what they call an open secularism, which develops the essential outcomes of the two first principles uh, uh, by defining institutional structures in light of these objectives.